Hello everyone and welcome back to my flight career series, this time in X-Plane 11, which brings up a very important point, and that's that I will be using multiple different flight simulators in order to do what I want to do in this series, and that is going to be involving many different aircraft, some of which are not going to be available in Microsoft Flight Sim, some of which not available in X-Plane 11, uh, some of which will be in DCS World or Kerbal Space Program, and I'll get to how we're going to mesh it all together. And I have other very fancy ideas that will be even more confusing, though. Uh, we'll get to that. So this is going to be a multiple game sort of series, which I don't know if people actually do very much. But anyway, uh, the point is that for the purposes of what I wanted to do in this episode, I needed to be in X-Plane 11, and that is because there's certain things about the Cessna 172 that they didn't cover in Microsoft Flight Simulator, that X-Plane 11 will be better at. And so that's why we're here. And uh, in this case, I'm going to be putting to work the stuff that I learned in Microsoft Flight Simulator about the, uh, about the Cessna 172 and adding more information onto that. Now, X-Plane 11 does have a flight school, but it's mostly redundant as far as, you know, what we learned in FSX. So take off in a 172 landing traffic pattern or navigation. Haven't done the ILS approach yet, uh, but yeah. So not really worthwhile doing the flight school here. But in this episode, I plan to fly from Bremerton, which is where I was in Microsoft Flight Simulator, and fly to Portland. And my sort of uh, functional home, as far as things go, will be Hayward, California. And so that'll be sort of the hub of my activities. And um, we'll be extending out to Seattle as necessary. And also down to Edwards Air Force Base and Nellis Air Force Base for some of the more test flighty things eventually. So that's later on, you know, when we uh, start getting into more military aircraft and that sort of thing. But, so I've got grand schemes here. But, um, yeah. In order to sort of track my career, because it's not all about flight training, there's also a flight career aspect, and that means progression. Uh, there's not just my little logbook, there is also the matter of uh, some things that uh, will give that sense of progress. And for X-Plane 11, that's going to be SimBuddy. For Microsoft Flight Simulator, that's going to be both SimBuddy and FS Passengers. Now, if you guys can suggest other tools, I'll be glad to hear it, but let me show you what SimBuddy and uh, in another episode we'll talk about FS Passengers, but what this is all about. It is an, an, a website, SimBuddy.com, and uh, basically it is a free service, but there is a premium side to it, and you can see the upgrade to premium thing, and I explain what uh, that does for you, but it's not necessary really. Um, but it's got a sort of little program that uh, you run on your computer that it will communicate with. And it has um, XP UI PC that hooks into, um, what you call it, uh, X-Plane 11. And it can also work with Microsoft Flight Simulator. Now, I can show you the logbook. And these are flights I have done. Uh, some of them I posted videos of on YouTube. So the... F-A-18 flights, for instance, from JFK to Chicago here. I posted a video of that. Um, if you have premium, uh, you get all sorts of information about your average sync rate and average distance flown and stuff like that. Uh, for now, it still gives us some interesting things, like, for instance, uh, it gives me a map of my flight. That's very nice. I'm actually impressed that they store that information and tells me the distance flown. It gives me points depending on distance flown, sync rate on landing. Uh, it took away points because I flew over 250 knots below 10,000 feet. It's an FA-18. Anyway, uh, but yeah, um, certain stats are locked, but otherwise they tell me the flight time, route distance, uh, the sync rate on landing, speed on landing, bank angle, um, whether my gear was down, that's good. Uh, highest altitude and highest speed. So, uh, interesting bit of information. But other features of this website and its associated program are the virtual airline. 
and in fact I have set up raise aerospace the airline it says start funds 250 million 210,000 but don't be fooled because 250 million was necessary to set up the hub at Hayward so you can buy a hub and the hub costs money uh, so right now all I have is 210,000 and I use 30,000 to buy my Cessna 172 Skyhawk initially had a Cirrus design SR22 but I sold that one so all we've got is the Cessna 172 and uh, you have an aircraft marketplace where you can pick up other planes but they're all well I mean depending on what plane you want they can get pretty expensive and it has a little max passengers max cargo so very interesting it, uh, it's still in alpha or beta I don't know whether it's alpha or beta so it's still a work in progress this whole website and everything but it shows promise as far as being a tool to track a career and if you did want like job contracts that were already made instead of making up your own uh, there is a daily challenges thing uh, let me close this so daily challenges and so these are flights that people need to have done and there are small flights like that one or there are really long flights like this one and that'll determine how many points you get and presumably uh, how much money you get I don't know exactly how much money they pay for a flight yet because I haven't actually done any flights with this this will be all fresh as far as the virtual airline side is concerned my virtual airline has not flown any flights so far and so the first job is to get my Cessna down to Hayward and our first flight will be just from Bremerton to Portland okay so that's the idea you can have a flight generator if you don't like the daily challenges so there's all sorts of features is the point I don't want to belabor this let's get to the flight simulator and get started on my flight to Portland okay so here's our Cessna Skyhawk the interior is not going to be exactly the same as the plane in Microsoft Flight Simulator and I only need two hours of fuel I'll assume I'm carrying the equivalent of one passenger I think that's fine uh, I'm not carrying any passengers just yet we're not starting out the virtual airline part though I will try and get it to read my flight and log my flight so that I can get the flight time in SimBuddy. Yeah, Bremerton. I'm going to be starting at ramp 1. And that is because we're going to do the one thing that uh, we were not taught how to do in Microsoft Flight Simulator, and that is how to start the plane. So let's get going. Now, in a future episode, I'm going to talk a bit about flight planning and we're going to do proper flight planning but first I just want to start this and uh, to that end I'm going to read from the manual for the Cessna 172 and it says throttle control quarter uh, mixture idle that's where it is right now uh, it, you're supposed to do a standby battery check but I don't think I actually have that function on here master switches for alt and battery are on beacon switch on propeller area is clear all people and equipment are gone fuel pump switch on okay and we are supposed to set the mixture control to full rich and it says until stable fuel flow is indicated approximately three to five seconds well I get the strange feeling it's not going to indicate a stable fuel flow so I'm after three to five seconds I'm just gonna put it back to idle cutoff fuel pump switch basically we're priming the thing and then magneto switch start and then mixture full in and yep the engine has started we have not primed the engine too much I don't know if you can prime the engine too much I'm pretty sure that I didn't do that the best that I could have so yeah maybe we can't actually break it Okay, before takeoff, parking, uh, parking brake is set. Uh, we are 
our seats are in the upright position. Seat belt secure, I think, I guess, maybe. Cabin door is closed and locked. Um, altimeter, not sure. Um, this does not seem to be at our compass setting. Ah, yeah, I've seen that message before, but I'm not too sure. Well, anyway, let me just make sure that we set it, so. Okay, right, uh, it says that again. That looks like 280 something. All right, and then avionics. Now that the engine's running and we've got both magnetos on, we can have avionics. Okay. The trouble is, in X-Plane 11, air traffic control sucks. That is the major downside here. Though, Microsoft Flight Sim, the ATC is sort of formulaic anyway. But at least it gives you proper instructions. Here, I could tune Seattle Area Control Center, but it's going to be largely mostly annoying. So, we'll be, we'll be self-directed here and we're going to be doing VFR and it looks pretty clear so good times now I'm gonna have to avoid that guy and sort of turn around oh I guess I, I go out along this path here probably that's safest okay November zero two X-ray oh. Papa Y heading zero eight zero. Dang it! I I don't want heading to. Heading zero eight zero. November zero two X-ray Papa. Oh God! If I'm gonna have to hear you guys, I'll just. All right, fine. I will request altimeter. November one seven two Sierra Papa Kilo Papa Whiskey Tango altimeter two niner niner six. Hmm. Well, I've got a bit of a problem in that. I seem to have. Oh, uh, on this side it's. Okay, good. Read back. Kilo, Papa, Whiskey, Tango, Altimeter, 2, Niner, Niner, 6, November, 1, 7, 2, Sierra, Papa. Okay, I think that's 2996. Now, Microsoft Flight Simulator, I think the. The hours on the tachometer actually read continuously so that. It's the accumulated time that you've been in the plane. I don't know if that's true in here, though. Okay, well, here's the runway. All right, here we go. To Portland. Okay, rotate. And we're off. And we want to climb at 80 knots, as we were taught. And somebody has logged my takeoff from Bremerton. And we're going to be cruising at 5,000 feet only. Okay, looking good. Some mist below us, but nothing that would hamper our VFR capabilities. I do have a VOR tuned here. It's Olympia. If you try and file a flight plan, that'll be considered IFR, and I'm I'm not rated for IFR yet. I'm only rated for VFR, so none of that just yet. But that's uh, in here. Technically, even though you don't need to file a flight plan for VFR, as I understand it, um, it's prudent to do so, especially around busy areas like Seattle would be and Portland would be. So both of those would entail probably it's a good idea for you to file a flight plan, even though you're flying VFR. But in the game, if you file a flight plan like that, it considers it IFR. 
For this flight, I will fly it manually. I am not going to rely on autopilot. It's only going to take an hour to get to Portland, but I'm carrying two hours worth of fuel, just as reserves. I will consistently try and make sure that I'm only carrying the fuel that I need for the flight, so that because if you carry extra fuel, then you're that stuff that uh, that's an extra burden on the plane, and you're using more fuel in order to carry that fuel, so that's not good. You can see it wiggling all over the place, which I assume would be how the actual plane flies. It's much more sort of naturally pushed by the wind than it was even in Microsoft Flight Simulator. Microsoft Flight Simulator it had a tendency to one side at a lower level, and maybe that was just prop torque. So basically, instead of the way it was with the previous Cessna and Microsoft Flight Simulator, we tune the the COM and the VOR with this, with the basically the GPS system. So I have looked into how to file a flight plan, um, and this is basically what a flight plan looks like currently in Photoshop, but little VFR dot, aircraft identification, Cessna 172, True airspeed 120, which is pretty close to what we're at. Uh, departure, that's the route of the flight that I wanted, the cruising altitude, our destination. Estimated time, 57 minutes. And alternate airport, but pretty simple. And you can see the needle hovering around a true airspeed of 120. So, fairly accurate. Apparently, uh, if you go beyond plus or minus 10 knots on that you have to inform air traffic control but that's probably more if you're doing IFR I'm not sure how strict they are about that if you're VFR they're probably just glad that you filed a flight plan if you're VFR I'll have to take a look at all the regulations. That's a pretty big book. <laughs> but, yep. Yeah. Such things are in my future. There are some nice websites, and I guess while we're sort of stable here, and nicely at 5,000 feet, you can see 5,000 feet, uh, vertical speed moderate, right velocity, sort of turning a little bit to the left there. Uh, but uh, while we're here, I can show you one nice flight planning website. If you wondered where I got that uh, flight path on the flight plan from, uh, that is this website called Sky Vector. And I told it PWT and PDX. Whoops. And unfortunately, I can't export this to an X Plane 11 format. But this is the flight path between Bremerton and uh, Portland that I plotted, and it's pretty good. This service, Online Flight Planner, can export to x 11, the flight plan, but it gave me a flight to like SeaTac and then down to Portland, which wasn't what I wanted. Okay, we we're a little bit off course after I did that talk about those websites. But that Sky Vector one is nice because it has the the maps there. But uh, actually, uh, it's great because if you go to the FAA website, you can download all the maps for the United States. You don't have to buy them anymore, and uh, it's easy to find an app to have the maps on your iPad or whatever. But otherwise, uh, since we're on a computer, uh, you can just have it on a separate window. Another thing we should verify is that somebody has our information proper. And if we take a look, it is tracking our path out of Bremerton. You can see, there there I am. Tyler Rays, me. And it's got my speed. It updates that faster if you've got a premium account. I know that because uh, when you sign up, the first seven days, they give you the premium thing just so they can show off. 
but um, 5,000 feet and currently we're going up so that's probably not a good thing and I should probably go down again but we are headed towards Portland and everything looks good as far as flight tracking is concerned so still over Washington you can see uh, Mount Rainier there though the spar to the wing is sort of blocking the way nice thing about Cessnas is that you can see the ground I'm as far as sightseeing is concerned it's better to have a high wing aircraft so that the wing doesn't get in the way of seeing what's down below well the aircraft isn't getting pushed around very much now it's very very nice and stable doesn't seem to be much of a wind up against us very stable around 5,000 feet I'm not holding the control stick right now so if you haven't seen one of these it can look pretty daunting this uh, this map has a lot of information on it but let's start with these numbers and let me make sure that my cursor is getting yeah okay so these numbers right here actually indicate the the clearance level so that if you uh, what it's really saying is 6300 feet and that means that as long as you fly above 6300 feet you're not gonna bump into anything with margin so it's not like the tallest thing is 6300 feet in this area it's just saying that uh, as long as you fly at that level you're not going to bump into anything and so here it's 2400 here it's 4800 that's what those numbers are 8100 and you can see why here it says 8100 and the highest point seems to be 7788 right there I probably should have put my nav lights on I don't think I need the heat on because we're at 46 degrees Fahrenheit so it's not going to ice over Now flying at night time obviously would, this was not the most picturesque option but I also want to make sure that I'm flying at real world time. So we've got real world weather, we've got real world time and that's how it's going to be too. That's part of the realism. This is flight sim realism overhaul if you will. Though I'm sure I could uh, find ways of adding more realism, and we're probably going to get to that too. I wish there was an air traffic control plugin for. I've looked for one for uh, X Plane 11 to get up to the standards of Microsoft Flight Sim as far as the air traffic control is concerned. That would be nice. Well, we're basically halfway through the flight. I've done a reasonably good job keeping it at 5,000 feet, 120 true airspeed, and along our course. And of course, somebody will be displaying our track to show how badly off I was. And if we took a look at that, it's a reasonably straight line. It's a pretty good straight line right there. Now, it bears mentioning, if you're not familiar with uh, how planes are trimmed, that the reason why I've been able to keep my altitude very close to 5,000 feet is not because I'm constantly moving the control stick, I'm not even holding it. Uh, it is because of the elevator trim. But right now, we're at the top end, and it's not really going down much, though I need to... While the elevator trim has really helped as far as controlling the altitude, um, that does not help with the heading, which uh, I constantly deviate away from and have to adjust. But um, the elevator trim I've got on the hat switch on top of my joystick, and uh, if you don't know what it's parented to, you should check that out. But it's basically this wheel here, and you can see nose down, nose up, it's a little tab on the elevator which is what controls the pitch and that tab allows for uh, fine adjustments that 
uh, can sort of keep the aircraft tilted with a little bit of a nose up or a nose down without you constantly uh, holding the stick to adjust it. So I just adjust the elevator trim a little bit using the hat switch and make sure that uh, the result of the elevator trim is that we're more or less level at the altitude that I want. And that would be also exactly what the autopilot would do in order to keep us at its assigned altitude if I told it to have an assigned altitude. So uh, no particular difference either way. The heading though, as I once again deviate to the east from my intended heading, we're currently 18 minutes out, 39 nautical miles. We're basically through uh, two-thirds of the trip. It is very much nighttime outside. Not too sure about this engine gas temperature gauge and why it's like right at the bottom there. I don't know if you can see it right there very well. It's very dark. But to our left is Mount St. Helens. That's what we're passing by. I think it's worthwhile taking a look at how it is from the outside and here's my Cessna at night with the strobe lights on and everything actually there's still a afterglow of the sun in the back there that makes for a good, good sort of look okay I accidentally deviated away from my intended track and I'm a little bit low here. And we see a highway there. I wonder which highway that is. I think that's Highway 5 to our left there. So if you can see the highway to our left, that's uh, Interstate 5. And yeah, the reason I deviated was I was looking at the airport charts. And there's something else you can get from the FAA website, by the way. Uh, let me zoom out on this one. Here we go. So here's Portland, and this is the ILS approach for uh, runway 10R. And you can see the approach vector, the glide slope, the altitude you should be at every distance away from it. Uh, let me zoom in a little bit more so you can see that. It even shows little mountains that you might be interested in um, and uh, alternate mist approach and the airport diagram in the corner there. It's got all the approaches. You can see this is a 1000 page document <laughs> and that's just for the northwest area but it's got all of that and it's also got a much more detailed version of the airport diagram There's all these here we go so you can see the taxiways and everything and obviously that's a very distracting sort of document so I tended to be drifting while looking at that now I don't think we can ask for clearance to land or anything. I'll just take a look uh, at the airport diagram. It looks like there's a 10 left, 28 right, but there's also a 20 runway 21, which is just a 6,000 feet runway. It's not the main runway. It's the one that crosses. So I think that would be very constructive to go for that runway. Since our heading is 16, 21 is not too far away. If we take a look here, and I well, we can't really see much. So if we're going for runway 21, I'm going to aim at 13 or 130. And we are starting to descend, so I am allowing my altitude to drift down. I'll even throw down to 20, 2,000 RPM. 
So that is how Portland looks at night in X-Plane 11. We can definitely see Portland International there. Very visible at night. I think in the next flight I'll take it in uh, Microsoft Flight Simulator and we will see how that goes. The next flight will be from Portland to Yuba County Airport, uh, Marysville. Uh, left fuel right. Well I think it's just saying our fuel is low which I knew. We actually should have enough though not all the fuel in the tanks are usable but I think the indicators over here just indicate the usable amount of fuel. There's a certain amount of you know fuel that's just gonna be left over in a tank each time that just can't be fed into the engines. But we, we are almost certainly just fine despite having very little fuel left. I did pack, according to the simulator, two hours of fuel, though maybe I should have done that calculation manually. And I think maybe in Flight Sim I will start out my FS Passengers career as well. I suppose I could tune the VOR. We sort of learned how to do that, didn't we? One way to turn uh, tune the VOR, I think, in this is to go in here, click that, details, Vortac, tune nav 1. There we go. So we can just use the map to do that. I want to have runway heading 21 so I've tuned that and I am going to now pull up and much like we did I'm going to level out at 1100 feet I'm going to wait for the track to come in okay we see that the VOR track is coming in and I'm going to turn to 21 now And it's a 20 degree turn. We are familiar with that now. We can actually see the runway fairly clearly. We're obviously a little bit past here. Gonna go to 1500 RPM and prepare to drop the flaps. Retrim. You can see cars on the highway, cars all over the place. Looking good. Nighttime here is looking good. Okay. First bit of flaps. And I'm going to readjust the elevator trim, of course. Make sure that we're still on the scent. And 1500 RPM still. Uh, it seems like I'm too low. We can see four red dots there. Barely you can see those. So let's throw up and gain some altitude. Those are supposed to inform us about the glide slope. I hope they work properly. Seems like... I mean, I feel like I'm being very high here. But I'll, I'll just trust them. Uh, okay, let's throw back down again. Okay, that's two. That's the glide slope. Should go for three degrees. Down. Do not stall, please. So 
60 knots is pretty okay. And we're past the whole poppy level. Let's just land. Okay, brakes. Oh, the little compass is really tweaking out. All right. Uh, okay, well, I see a taxiway up ahead. Well, I see the lights indicating that I can exit the runway there, so I'll just go with that. Well, I definitely did not exceed 250 knots under 10,000 feet this time. <laughs> not a threat with this one. Okay, I think I'll just follow these lights here. Honestly, I'm not entirely sure where these lights lead. South ramp. Well, that's good. But now I'm all out of lights. Let me check the map. Well, I appear to be over here, and there really isn't much by way of guidance here. Yep, there's just a building up front. Let's take a look how it is outside. I guess I can park closer to that building at least. Well, looks like a spot to me. Probably for a much bigger plane, but... In lieu of any instructions, I'll take it. Okay, so let me bring up the manual and figure out how this thing is supposed to be shut down. Thrall control is idle. Yes, it is. Electrical equipment off. Avionics switches off. And I guess electrical equipment would include the lights. Not sure. Okay, mixture control idle cutoff. Okay, magneto switch off. Magnetos are off. Okay, master switches off. And that's it. We have shut down the Cessna 172. And parked at Portland. Alright, so I think uh, this will wrap it up. My first very serious flight with the Cessna 172. We kept it very close to the flight parameters that I set for this particular flight and next time we'll hop back into Microsoft Flight Simulator and perhaps we'll be doing it a bit differently we'll see we will certainly be doing it with full air traffic control and we'll see how that works out alright so thank you for watching I hope you enjoyed this video if you did enjoy this video please do press like if you have any comments or suggestions please leave them in the comment section below and I'll see you next time